All right, so welcome back to another video. Today we're going to continue with our WPF uh, application that we've been building the last weeks. I don't know how long it's been, a couple months probably by now. And uh, we've been using myapps.metro to style this thing. It's a predefined styling library. I like to call it the bootstrap of WPF and We've been using that to make our app look a little better, at least a little better than what I would come up with when I'm styling. Today we're going to talk about uh, the form to add expenses. We're going to create a model for the expenses. And then at the very end, we're going to add an expense table to our SQLite database using EF Core. So if that sounds fun and you want to stick along uh, or stick around rather for other videos that I do in the future, feel free to subscribe. We've finally reached 250 thousand views total on this channel which is awesome um, appreciate all of you that do watch these and uh, let's hop into it so I already went in and you were looking at the budget uh, model but I already went in and I added a few things to the WPF because I didn't know if it would be worth your time creating buttons and forms all over again we've done that before in the past so if you want to check that out go to the very beginning but what I did since this whole column in our grid was empty, I added a button up here called add an expense. And my idea is users can only add an expense when a budget is selected, right? We don't want them to hit add expense when they don't have a budget selected because we won't know what budget to expense that to. And right now it's visible, but my thought is after a user selects a budget, uh, we will then make it visible. But in the meantime, it'll be invisible or hidden. And then on the far right, just like we did with creating a new budget, I created another form. Pretty simple. Uh, it's just having a title and an amount for an expense. And then you hit create expense for the particular budget that you have created. So for instance, if I bought gasoline, um, I put in the title gas. And then let's say I spent like 30 bucks on gas. I'd put 30 here and then hit create. And it would deduct from our total budget or what's remaining. Um, $30 and so on and so forth. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's what this form is. It's, it's pretty basic. We can probably add other things if we wanted to, um, maybe a date in the future, but to be honest, I'm gonna keep it simple and just have these two fields. What is the expense and how much did it cost? So that's all I did ahead of time. Let's start with the button here and I am going to change its visibility to hidden. And now if we go into the code behind, I'm going to actually minimize most of these methods, if not all of them. Here's where a user selects a budget. So this event handler is going to be fired whenever the user selects one. So at the very end of this, let's go ahead and say create budget button dot visibility is going to be equal to visibility dot uh, visible. And now if we start the app, we should see a few budgets on our left, but we shouldn't see the add expense button. But if I click on one, meaning that I kind of activate that budget or that, well, here we go. It's not even working. So I didn't, <laughs> it's because I, I called the wrong thing. I got too many buttons. So this is create expense, right? Create expense button dot visibility, not create budget. So now if I click a budget, activate it, it still didn't work. Okay, third time's the charm, it's called add expense button. The create expense button is what's shown in that form, uh, which I will also have hidden. But in the meantime, let's just start with one thing at a time because apparently one thing is all I can handle. Uh, hopefully this does this. So let's select one and yes, we finally get an add expense button. So the idea is we're gonna have another list view just like over here with the budgets but for expenses for that budget and then they can hit this to add a new expense and then this will show up and I'm also seeing that the margin of this text box is a little bit off so let's fix that as well let's give this a margin of three and let's make the visibility of this also hidden um, until that button's clicked and I'm not going to worry about adding expenses until we get it all set up in the database, we get a model and all that. So that's not going to be this video. So we're not really going to work on any more of the logic um, until the next one. But I thought might as well set up the form um, and show you guys that. So now we want to create a new model, right? And add that 
to our database, our SQLite database. So we're going to click uh, new class. I'm putting it in the models folder just as before. And instead of class one, let's call this uh, expense. And we'll add that. And just like the budget class, um, we're going to give it an ID and the two fields. So it's going to be a title, an expense title, and the expense amount, right? But we also want to link it to the budget. We want these two things to relate. We want some kind of relationship. So in order to link it to the budget, I'm thinking I'm also going to reference the budget ID and the expense. So if you type prop and you hit tab, by the way, I don't know if you know this already, um, it'll kind of give you the scaffolding for a new property of a class, which is kind of cool. And we're going to leave this in int, change it to ID, and it already gives us setters and getters, which is perfect. So we'll do prop again and int and then this is going to be budget ID because we want a way um, to relate this back to the individual budgets and then prop and what did I call title and then amount okay whoops so prop um, this will be a string and title and then lastly another property this is going to be a double and amount. So this should be the only four fields, at least for now, or properties in this class that we're going to need. So now if we go back to the context, which is what defines um, the SQLite database, we want to add another DB set. So public DB set of type expense and we can call this expenses and then add getters and setters. Oh, and this is mad because we didn't make the expense class public. Right now it's private, so let's change that to public. Go back and we no longer get the warning. So now if we go to tools, um, NuGet package manager, and then the package management console down here, we can create another migration. So the first migration we call it initial. So let's run the command add migration. If I spell that right. And what do we want to call this one? Um, how about add expense? It's going to build that migration for us. We can check it out real quick. This is it. Uh, it's just going to add on to what is, is existing, and that is the expenses table. And it gives a primary key to ID. Perfect. It looks good. So now let's go back to the package manager console and run update database. I'll run that. And then in the meantime, I'm going to uh, pull up the SQLite database browser. And if we look at the database, now we have another table called expenses and we can browse the data, switch to expenses here to look at that table and nothing in there yet. Um, but why would there be? <laughs> we just created the table. So pretty simple, right? How simple was that to add a brand new table to an existing database using EF Core? Kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to do in this video. In the next one, we're going to do some logic to add the expenses that should be interesting and um yeah if you had a hard time following along especially uh, if you are following along and i didn't go over all the the xaml parts um, the code will be down in the description in my github if you want to go check that out and i hope to see you in the next video